Hello. Hey, how are we doing? Good, how are you? Doing good. I'm very casual today. <laughs> good. It was, it was the first day I, I hadn't had to leave the house in a really long time. So I'm like, I'm not doing anything. And I'm wearing a sweatshirt all day. And... Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing, Gina? Good. Good. And hello to you too, Jeannie. Hello. So thanks, you guys, for joining me tonight. And um, congratulations for you guys. I saw some Facebook posts with some listing stuff. And I'm loving the uh, seller boot camp as well. So, oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, great yeah. job on that. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay, well, let's get started. Um, oh, and there's Tracy. How are we doing, Tracy? Good. 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 Okay, so we're going to talk about geo farming. Um, and I'm going to go over the basics. So first of all, when we're thinking about a farm, we first have to choose what neighborhood or zip code or area we're going to be working in. Um, I personally like the number of about a thousand homes in a farm. And I like that number, especially to start with, because <clears throat> you could choose to knock on a hundred doors per week and you could knock on a hundred doors fairly quickly. The last time I went door knocking, um, I think I got through somewhere around like 70, just under 80 doors. And I believe I talked to 17 people and that took me about two hours. So it, it didn't take that long. Um, and, and there's a distinction to me between door knocking and canvassing. Canvassing would be you're leaving a flyer on their door, but you're not even knocking. You're just going to each house and dropping something off, right? Both of those can be strategies. Door knocking, um, if you want to really maximize the, the production out of a farm, door knocking and getting to know the people in the farm would be best right? Um, because, you know, farming is a process that takes time to really start to see a big return out of the area. You're looking at probably 18 months. You'll get, you know, you'll get, you'll get business here and there, these one-offs, but um, according to the Red Book, you can essentially expect a one in 50 return, meaning for every 50 homes, you get expect one closing, if you've effectively marketed to that community at least 12, 12 times a year, that would be like a 12 direct mailing campaign, right? Um, anyway, back to the thousand doors. And again, the reason I like that is a hundred doors a week. That means you could get through that entire farm in about 10 weeks, right? So if you think of it that way, and you're going to commit to farming this for at least a year, um, you could knock on those doors four or five times throughout that year. In between door knocks, you could also decide to canvas, right? Um, and then, of course, you could do mailers. You could do neighborhood events. Um, you could you could uh, do offers, like anyone that signs a, a buyer representation agreement or a listing agreement with me this month will receive a $500 credit at closing or will receive a free home warranty or something to that effect. Those would be considered offers, right? Um, but anyway, so a thousand doors, hundred a week, you can get to that whole farm in 10 weeks. And then you would start over at the first door again, and you just continue doing that throughout the year. Right. So you want to plan out when am I going to go out door knocking or when am I going to go out canvassing and think about that throughout the year. Okay. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and log into matrix so we can look at choosing a farm area. Um, a couple other things to keep in mind, it's always been a rule of thumb to sort of stay away from an area. If it's, if there's a single agent or like a team with more than 20% market share, there's not going to be a lot of areas that have 20% market share going to one person, but it's something to keep in mind. I never really worried about that personally. Um, but if there's areas, you know, of like, for example, I think of the odd couple team who's in our St. Paul office. They, Shane, Shane has, has farmed both Midway and then like Miriam Park, um, that area for a long time. And they do have a lot of market share in that area. Um, Shane started in Midway, but then now he's more on the other side of 94 in Miriam Park. And I can't recall either neighborhoods at the top of my head, but you know, the general area I'm talking about. 
So that could be one that you might want to think through before you start to farm to an area like that. But beyond that, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and search here. Um, and I'm actually just gonna to go to the map. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I live in White Bear Lake. So if I were farming, I would be choosing this kind of area here. And since I've done this before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grid out a specific area. And again, you're gonna to wanna to have borders on the north, south, east, and west. So you want this to be a, pur a purposeful gridded out area. Um, yes, Mac Rovlin in Highland Park. Thank you, uh, Jackie, <laughs> appreciate that. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and grid this area out. And I already know that there's about a thousand homes in this area and I'll show you how I determine that. Okay, so this is where I could start my farm. Um, and it's, you know, it's uh, compared to like St. Paul or Minneapolis, it's not quite, you know, the streets aren't gridded. Like if you were in East St. Paul or something like that, except for that little area by um, Beaver Lake, most of it is sort of gridded out, right? Um, so that's easy to walk down one side of the street and do all those doors, get to the end of your border and walk back the other way and do all the doors on the other side of the street. If you did that, you'd probably get through 100 doors right there, right? Um, so basically, um, the way, well, the first thing I'll show you and also to consider is once you have it boarded out, you do, I think it makes sense to shoot for about a 10% turnover, meaning in the past year, about 10% of the homes in the farm have sold, right? Now this one, what I'm gonna do is I've got this area chose. I'm gonna go back to criteria and I'm just gonna do sold. And I'm gonna go back right here at close date. I'm gonna go back to three, three, 20 plus. By doing that, it'll show me everything from the third of last year, March 3rd to today that has sold. And you can see we got 77 matches out of a thousand homes. That's about a 7.7% ish or somewhere around there. Um, and that's decent. So that means out of that farm, 70 some homes have sold. That's a decent pool of sales uh, to start with, right? It's not 10%, but it's not 2% either. So back to the map. And again, I just did that to see how many have sold in the past year in that area that I'd like to focus on. And there we go. I'm actually gonna get rid of this so we don't see those anymore. They're still there, doesn't matter. Okay, now to check and see in general how many homes are in an area, um, there could be a better way to do this than I know of, but the best way I found is I go to USPS and I go to, if you, if you go to usps.com and hover over business, you can see right here, it says every door direct mail. Um, this is an inexpensive way to mail to every home in a specific area. I'm just using it for our example to see how many homes would be in a specific farm area. So I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna click on search for 55110, that's my zip code. And right here. Okay, now as I scroll in, that area we were talking about, if we go back to this map, okay, it's right about here. It's Conrad kind of E on the south, F in the north, White Bear to the uh, east, and Bel Air to the west. So if I hover these little purple areas, see when I hover over that, it shows. Okay. Now, if you look up top here where it says root, residential, business, total, this is a male root. So I can see when I hover over this section of the farm area, I've got 620 residential homes, 30 businesses, a total of 650. Right. If I click over here a little bit, that one's got 585. Right, you can see that total up at the top there. So basically, this this route and this route are going to give me that thousand homes plus a few, right? So I know based on the map that I created here that I should be pretty good with about a thousand homes. 
Okay, any questions on that so far? Okay. So I've got the area I want to focus on. I know there's about a thousand homes there. I know 77 homes have sold out of that area in the past year. Um, so I have the general information that I need to get started, right? Um, now, if we're gonna knock on these doors four times a year, and maybe we're dropping off another flyer another four times a year, we wanna think through and plan out for the year, what are we gonna be bringing? What piece of value are we gonna bring? So you could literally just do a market update each time you went through the farm, right? That would be, I think, sufficient. Because keep in mind, the point, the point of knocking on the door and talking to these people is just to, it's really to build a relationship. They start to see you frequently when they have a real estate need where, again, just like when we're talking to our sphere, we want to make sure that we're the ones that they think of, right? Um, because we don't know when people are going to make a move we have to find out by talking to them, right? Um, you could find that you go through and knock on doors and you, you may get someone that says, I've had, the, I've had this happen to door knocking. I was praying about what to do about my house and then you knocked on the door today. It was, you know, you'll get those kind of things too, especially if you do it frequently. Um, so if I, would, if I decided I was going to bring a market update, there's a few places we can go for, for data on what's happening in that real estate market. You could also, as you're knocking on the door and you talk to someone, of course, you want to get there if they have any interest at all, or you could let them know, which if you'd be interested, I'll send you a monthly market update via email. Then you can put them on a neighborhood nurture uh, through command. You just have to make sure you get their name, their phone number, and their um, email address. You, are, you already would have their address since you're standing in front of the house. Um, Okay, but anyway, so a place to go get some market data is one place we can go is SPAR. That's just S-P-A-A-R.com. That's the St. Paul Area Association of Realtors of which we are all members. If you go to this website and you hover over news and statistics and then click on statistics. Now I'm gonna scroll down a little bit to fast stats. I'm gonna click select report. And I'm going to click on the weekly market. Actually, no, that, not that one. That one's for the whole Twin Cities. Um, I'm gonna first select an area and I'm gonna look for White Bear Lake. This isn't gonna be based on neighborhood. You'll have to do it as a general, you know, it'll be more broad than the specific farm you're shooting for. There we go. Time period most recent. Now I can simply click on view report. And I can see here, <clears throat> there's been an increase. This is year over year. So at the same time last year, there's been a 9% increase in new listings. There's been a 10.9 increase in median sales price. So it's telling sellers, this is a good time to sell. And values have been increasing. And 0% in closed sales, that's not probably that relevant to uh, someone at the door. Um, and again, I wouldn't get too bogged down on, I, you, again, the point is to take action, knock on the door and talk to somebody. That's the point, right? To me, it matters. So it doesn't matter a ton what you're bringing there. You want to bring something, but that's not, that's kind of secondary to, to taking the action and knocking on the door and talking to someone. So this is a nice way, again, to just start a, a conversation with that farm. Um, you'd want to study this and understand what these numbers mean so you can very quickly and briefly at the door explain, right? Um, that's also an opportunity after you've given this to them and, you know, just, just wanted to say hello, introduce myself. I'm a local expert agent in this area, um, and I'm just informing our neighborhood what's going on in the market, right? You give them a, a little 30-second, one-minute spiel about this data, leave them with the flyer, make sure your information is printed on the backside. And then what I normally did was as I was just turning around to walk away, I'd say, oh, you know, one more thing. I'm not, you know, I just mentioned some of this data here, but I'm not sure if you're aware, but the inventory of, of homes for sale for buyers that are in the market is shockingly low. It's about 42% less than it was last year. And last year was less than the year before. 
So across the Twin Cities, we only have about 4,300 homes for sale. Um, so that being said, I was just curious, who in the neighborhood do you know that might be looking to make a move this year? Right? It's just a simple, that's all you have to ask. Most of the time, they're, they're going to say nobody. Um, if you go through the farm and get to know the area, you will find the neighborhood gossip or the neighbor that knows everything about everybody, and they're going to know for sure. And they're going to say, well, they're, I know that they're, they just had a baby, so they're probably thinking about it, and these guys are retiring. You know, they're going to know. And if that's the case, you could say, great, do you mind if I, when I go and knock on that door, if I mention that you, you, you know, that we talked and I, do you mind if I mention your name? You know what I mean? And then go ahead and knock on that door as well. Um, but I always added that little piece at the end, letting them know how low the inventory is and do they know anyone looking to make a move or who do they know is a better way to say it. Um, any questions on SPAR, how to access this data or where I went? Okay. I'm going to close that. I'm going to go here to back to MLS and I'm going to show you another place that you can get data. So we're going to go back here to, I don't see InfoSparks there. I'm going to go to my dashboard and I'm going to click on InfoSparks right here. InfoSparks is a, is a fantastic place to get data from. Um, and you can choose basically the, up here, the Twin Cities region. You can choose by county, community, school district, postal code, city, or neighborhood. If I start typing in here, White Bear Lake, there it is. I'm gonna change this from line to bar. I just think bar is a little bit easier to look at. But again, this is gonna show us data and if you look down here, all these blue um, rectangles are data points. So right now I'm on sales price. The median sales price is 285. The average, if I click average, is 315. And you can see it's a 17% increase over last year. Gosh, that's crazy. Um, Matt, can I ask you a question? Yes. You always leave that at like the three years, 12 months, or do you drop that down when you're looking at this? Yep, you can change this to one year. You okay. know, I'm just gonna show you the current year or two year. Three years is a good comparison here. Okay. You, you could just do two year if you wanted to show year over year. Okay. This is a rolling 12 months and there's many options here as well. You can do monthly, which is just gonna show you month over month mm -hmm. difference. Um, you can do rolling three months, rolling six months, rolling 12 or year to date. So this would be okay. 2020 year to date. This would be 2021 year to date, okay. right? If you do year to date, it's a 22, geez, that's, that's just that, that those increases, you know, what, what scares me about those kind of increases is those are not sustainable, right? You, you can't just increase 20% a year indefinitely. The, I can recall thinking this in 2006 when this was happening as well. Um, eventually that cycle is gonna slow, right? So a shift, a shift in the market is inevitable. Um, and I think a shift in the market will be good for all of us, actually. We, we need more inventory. Sales are going to be continuing to slow if there's not more inventory coming on. Mm -hmm. But that's a conversation for another time. Okay. Um, so anyway, something good to bring to them would be this, right? Just showing them the difference in value from last year to this year. That's a fantastic piece of data. Like anybody who's um as in, well in particular anyone who owns a home is going to be interested whether they're thinking about selling or not they're going to be interested in in is their home gaining value or losing value right so this will be interesting for any of them uh that you'd be talking to um i think the sales price is a good one that you could bring um you could also do homes for sale there's only 17 that's gonna show how low it is. You could do month supply, but I don't know that most, 0.4, I don't know that most sellers understand what month supply is. I'll explain it briefly. What this means is that, um, let's say right now, no other home came on the market, right? In, in this area, in White Bear Lake. That means in 0.4 months or whatever, a week and a half or something, like, or you know, whatever how many 0.4 days is, all the homes that are available would be gone. That's essentially what that means. So it's like, um, 
inventory on a on a shelf at, at Target, right? If you stock the shelf at Target, it's going to last for a certain period of time before all those all that product is gone. It's the same thing. That's what the month month supply uh, is speaking to. Okay. Um, but anyway, if you decided to use something like this, you could simply do print or share. If I do print, it's going to pull this up and it's going to look like this, right? You could also choose, now I don't know how to do this exactly, but I know you could take, maybe you, you want this as a data point and a couple others as a data point. Maybe you have three data points or four data points. You could, you could do it like I just showed you, print, and then you could shrink this down so you could fit four maybe of these things on one sheet. These, it's, it's also nice because it's already branded with your information on there too. So um, those are two spots I would go to get data. And then if I had someone that was interested, I would always ask them, are you interested in receiving my monthly neighborhood update, right? That's what I would call it. I would call it something like my neighborhood update, right? Um, and again, if they are, get their contact info and get them set up on that through command. Um, in addition to door knocking and canvassing um, and bringing this information, you can also, it's kind of hard to target Facebook ads in that area now, but because I don't think they let you get any closer, I think 15 mile radius is the tightest you can make it. Um, but you could try and specify some Facebook ads to the area. You certainly could do mailers to the area. Um, the, le the least expensive way is just to door knock and flyer, right? Or canvas. Um, every door direct, this that I showed you here. Um, if I hover over this area, you can see right up here where it says cost. I'll show you the cost of that. So the cost of, of this route to mail to 650 homes is 124.80. Um, that's but there is a process you need to go through if you're going to use this service. You're they they only so basically you'd have to print your own material. It does have to be a specific size within a size parameter that is specified on the website by the post office. You'd get it printed. You have to have a little kind of a postage printed thing on the back. All this is again, it's in the website. And then you'd have to have it cut to that size. You would then shrink wrap it. You would print out your receipt from purchasing this route. It'll, it'll have a receipt printed out. And you, you count out the number of, of you count out the 650 flyers. You'd put the receipt on top, you'd shrink wrap it. And then you physically bring that to the mail office and drop it off. And they scan it in and then, and then when they go out on the route the next day or two days later or whatever, they, the, the, the postman just puts that at every single house, right? So it's like when you get a mailer that says to current resident, it'd be something like that, right? Now you can do that. I mean, if, if you have the time and ability to do that, that can be, that can be a good cost savings. I did that for about, uh, I want to say 10 months, maybe 11 months. This was in 2014. Um, and I was mailing to 1700 homes in East or sorry, West Bloomington and Eden Prairie. That was the area I was sort of farming. And I was only doing mailers to, the, to those, those two farm areas. Um, I was spending around 450 to 500 a month to do that through, um, it would kind of depend on if like office max had a sale on paper or printings or those kind of things. If I could coincide that I could get it for a little bit less. But anyway, so that, that it ended up being somewhere around 20 cents a mailer or something like that. If you calculate 450 and divide that into the 1700 homes I was sending it to. So in that 10 months, I probably spent about five grand. I think I got three transactions out of that, which was probably somewhere around $30,000 commission, somewhere around there. It might've been a little bit more. Um, so it was a good return on investment, right? I spent five, I made 30 or 33 or something like that. Um, but if you're going to do something like that, especially mailers and spend money, again, I would suggest you make sure that you have the funds to do something like that for the whole year, right? 
like you could you could commit to mail to um door knocking and canvassing for the year because those printings won't cost you much right and that's just your time and your physical you know your body out there working um but again if i'm going to start a farm i would start just the way i described it you're going to start picking the area looking at how many homes for sale and i would certainly start uh, with door knocking and or canvassing right it's inexpensive and you can start you can literally start doing that tomorrow you know what i mean um and then as that's clicking along you could decide okay now i'm going to start sending mailers to some of these homes um you could also decide that if you start to communicate with some of these people you could start to send mailers to those specific homes right so the way I did this by sending out those mailers is the mailers were very simple and cheap. They were just on yellow card stock. And it just said something like, you know, curious about what your neighbor's homes are selling for something like that. Right. If you're curious and want some more information, go call this toll fee number and leave your name, address, email address, and phone number, or go to this website, which was just a web form. And it would just say the same thing it would ask them to put their information in. They would do that, I would get the lead, and then I would send them a very broad analysis of the area, just really general of all of West Bloomington or all of Eden Prairie, every home type, everything in there. And really, again, the point was to identify people that are raising their hand. <clears throat> and my plan was then to, spe to then, the ones that came in like that, I would specify maybe some higher end mailers to those specific properties. So I'm not spending $2 per mailer on 1,700 homes. I'm spending $2 on 30 or 40 or 50 homes, right? Um, that was the thought process behind that. The issue I ran into with the bottleneck I hit was myself. So because I had to do all this stuff, you know, I, I'd get busy and I wouldn't have time and I'd, you know, I'd, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. And anyway, I just eventually stopped doing it because, um, I was going to two different post offices and I was counting all this stuff out. I had my assistant help me too, but it still became the bottleneck. Um, you can do mailers and the whole works out of command as well. So you could specify an area, specify a mailer and send it to every home in that area through command, all automated. It's more expensive. That's probably, I think around 60 or 70 cents a mailer on the lower end is my guess. But that would be a good way to automate things and make sure that it's getting done. Okay, I feel like I've been talking for about 30 minutes straight. Does anyone have any questions? Um, or is any of this confusing or does it not make sense? Anything you guys are thinking about would be helpful. Okay. At that, because that that is about it for now. Hopefully you guys took some notes on that. Um, mm -hmm. But just keep in mind, you're going to want to choose an area, border it out, check and see how many, what the turnover rate is. Is it getting at least 5% to 10% turnover rate of homes for sale? And then choose what you're going to bring and commit to doing it for at least a year. Okay. Um, really, you should commit to it. It should just be part of your lead gen efforts. It should be one part of it, right? In addition to making calls and maybe doing lead generation online or whatever else you're doing for lead gen, this could be a part because it's long term, it takes time. Um, <clears throat> but agents, agents that farm successfully, they it gets to the point then after some time where that's all they have to do, right? That's all their, the, all, the majority of their business all comes from the farm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. And if there's no other questions, we can wrap it up for tonight. All right, thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a Wait, have a Matt, I have a question. Yeah. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. So if we are in an area where it is already, I, I'll let it, I'm going to disclose. I'm in the odd couple area. I know you are. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am. And they are mirroring what I'm doing, actually. Right. I'm not saying that because I just joined some clubs and they just joined them. <laughs> yeah. So um, how do I separate myself from them? Because they have a team. I'm an individual. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to be, I, I can't compete with them. 
So how do you compete with an area that has got an individual that's already saturated that, that area? Do I have to move outside of it? Well, to get a better return, probably, or you have to outwork them. You have to do all of this stuff more frequently. And once you get to having conversations, you want to distinguish yourself as a solo agent from a team. So yep. that would that would be a conversation like, I, I know this team, see, you know, I know what you could say yep. to them is, is I would take care of you on a personal level yes. versus being lost and just a number on someone's team. Right? Exactly what I've said. I have actually yeah. approached it in that venue as I will be the person that is taking care of you. I will not be tanning you off to another team member. Correct. Yep. That's exactly, so, that's, you want to distinguish between. And if I was on a team, I'd be saying the opposite, right? Most right. solo agents don't have time to spend with you specifically. They're out looking for more business. When you, when you come into our team, our organization, and we take care of you, we have specialists in every area and you will never be lost in the shuffle. There's always going to be someone that's going to answer your questions, right? Hey, Jacqueline, but I, can I interject? Sure. Jack, I also, um, Shane, I'm sitting at my dining room table and Shane has sat at my dining room table um, presenting to us. And I, in my current um, life, I am a childcare provider and I have recommended, I think Shane has bought or sold like six of my former clients' houses. Um, so I too share um, your, I mean, sometimes I think about, should I have just joined the odd couple team or tried to, <laughs> they have had me or whatever, but like you bring value that only you can bring, whether that's you're absolutely right. Or whether you're an individual, I, I, cause I trust me, you and I are probably thinking the exact same things. And like, how do I compete with the guy that I'm telling everybody to go do business with? Yep. Right, but that's but what I can bring to the table though too is I I want to individualize myself uh, separate from the odd couple team but joint venture of we are both Keller Williams we're both great people to work with um, and we're all members of the same community. No, yes, I mean we are all, exactly we are all members of the same community. We want to build our communities up, and I'll I'll make a suggestion out there for everyone. If there's national night out, do something for neighborhood block to, yeah. to that neighborhood block. Right. If, like everybody knows Shane will buy your hot dogs. Shane will buy you a jumpy house. Right. Like, I will, I've done the same. I do the same for my block. So, right. um, but what I can say that, you know, Shane may have a team. You are not going to miss I will not miss an email or you will not miss a response. My responsive rate is within the hour. Yep. And um, even though I may not have a team, they're not going to know that I don't have a team because Shannon has been my assistant throughout the whole, tr my transaction assistant. That's totally right. Worth the money. Yes, absolutely. And really it's, it, and it also comes down to, crafting your value proposition. So you can explain these things quickly and easily to someone that says, well, I was thinking about using the odd couple team. You could say they're a fantastic choice. This is what differentiates me from them. And then have that practiced and ready to go, right? But yeah. Beth, you said something that's important. Everyone, I know we get, you know, we might be, um, have trepidation about rolling with the big boys in the area or whatever, but every one of you has value. Every one of you has a unique life experience that provides, a, provides you with a unique value, right? It's different than anyone else's and your perspective is going to be different and all, all manner of things are going to be different. So um, that is important to keep in mind. And it's really teasing that out and getting that so you can articulate what your value is, right? Being able to articulate your value is an extremely powerful tool they have. That is extremely powerful. So. Hey, Jackie, if you want to connect offline, I'd love to chop it up. Yes, a little. I was just going to, I was going to IM you. I would love to do that. Beth, um, you, let's do that. You can Beth Jackson at kw.com. You can email me. Okay. I will yeah. send you an email. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. All right, Have a great you. evening. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Take care.
do you have a chance or do you have a, a, any time to l talk about the stuff that we went over earlier today? Yeah, I've got a couple of minutes. Go right ahead. Have, have you had a chance to look and see if we think 385 is kind of 